Hello, welcome to this tutorial on the Garmin G1000 engine monitoring. Whether you're enjoying the thrill of flight simulation or sharpening your virtual piloting skills, the Garmin G1000 is a game changer. Today we'll dive deep into one of its essential components, engine monitoring. Stick around to learn how to keep your simulated engine running smoothly and efficiently, including how to lean it. The Engine Monitoring System, or EMS, is your go-to tool for keeping an eye on the critical aircraft systems. Located on the MFD, or the Multifunction Display, it provides real-time data on engine performance, fuel levels, electrical systems, and more. Think of the EMS as your aircraft's health dashboard. Monitoring these parameters helps you make informed decisions during every phase of flight. To access the EMS, start by pressing the soft key labeled engine or system on the MFD. Depending on your aircraft model, you may see different layouts, but essential data will always be front and center. If you're new to the G1000, take a moment to familiarize yourself with the layout. Practice switching between pages to ensure you're comfortable accessing this critical information quickly. Also, go ahead and go watch those other tutorials I have on the overview of the G1000 and how to do your flight plan. Here you can see we're on the system page. The system page displays your RPM, your oil PSI, oil temperature in Fahrenheit. It also calculates your fuel flow, how many gallons you've used, and how many gallons you have remaining. You can also see your fuel quantity gallons. Now you'll notice in this example, the amount of fuel remaining versus the fuel quantity in gallons is different. That's because you actually set the fuel remaining separately from the actual reading of your tanks. You can do this by selecting the gallons remaining tab and increasing or decreasing the gallons as necessary to match your amount you have remaining. Right now we have approximately 24 gallons remaining. Both the left and right tanks are about 12 gallons. So we can reduce the amount of gallons we have until we get the approximate amount. We'll say 23.4 to be safe. When you change your gallons remaining, it changes the gallons used. This is a good thing to go ahead and do before you take off so you know how many, how many gallons of fuel you've used on your flight. This also shows the electrical bus, which includes how many volts and amps are being used. As you can see right now, not a lot's being used, but it is providing 28 volts. If the amps were in the negative, that could mean we had an alternator failure. Thankfully, we don't. We have positive charge. Next, we'll move on to the engine display. This is what you'll see normally when you start up your G1000. The RPM gauge, or the revolutions per minute, indicates the engine speed. Keep it within the green arc to avoid overstressing the engine. During takeoffs and critical phases of flight, you may go into the white arc, and that's okay. Just keep it out of the red arc, if at all possible. If you're in a high-performance aircraft, you'll also see a manifold pressure gauge. In this Cessna 172, we're not a high-performance aircraft. We're not going to have the manifold pressure because we don't have a variable pitch prop. We have a fixed pitch prop, no blue handle. The oil temperature and pressure gauges are also indicated here. Again, keep it within the green and you're good to go. You also have fuel flow gauge, which is not as accurate as the actual numbers when you select the system page. EGT is also indicated here, but we'll get into EGT in a little bit more detail in the leaning system. Vacuum is also indicated. It is a separate system that powers vacuum instruments. Now, the G1000 is not a vacuum instrument, so you may ask, why is there a vacuum gauge? Well, as you can see on this aircraft, we do have backup vacuum indicators. That would be crucial for the aircraft to have a backup vacuum system. You also see the fuel quantity and the electrical bus as well, as well as the amount of hours the engine has on it. Leading the aircraft is a crucial skill for optimizing fuel efficiency and ensuring engine longevity, especially during cruise. The Garmin G1000 makes this process straightforward with its Lean Assist mode. Here's how to do it. First, access the Lean Assist mode by pressing down on the Engine soft key, then selecting the Lean soft key. Here you will see you have four different cylinders in this engine. 
You can shift between the different engines by using the Cycle Select soft key. As you cycle through the different cylinders, you can see they have different EGTs and CHTs, or exhaust gas temperatures and cylinder head temperatures. You'll start the leaning process by finding the hottest cylinder. In this case, it's normally the number four cylinder. We're going to monitor the EGT. As we begin leaning this currently fully rich engine, you'll notice the EGT will begin to rise. This is because you're reducing the amount of fuel in the combustion chamber of the cylinder, which is decreasing the amount of coolant that the fuel itself is providing, increasing the temperature of both the EGT and the CHT. We'll stop the leaning process when we see the temperature start to decline, as we've seen now. Then we'll increase the mixture back to a richer state just onto the other side of that peak temperature. In this case, we saw the peak temperature of 1505. In this case, we'll bring it down to where it shows us 1495 degrees Fahrenheit on the EGT. This is what we call rich of peak. This is generally considered to be a better state for the engine. However, there are times where you may want to run lean of peak for the maximum efficiency if you're trying to go a longer distance and want the fuel to last longer. In the simulator, we can run lean of peak without any worries. In real life, maybe not so much. You want to keep an eye on the CHT or the cylinder head temperature as well. It's essential to ensure the engine stays within its safe operating limits during this process. Practice in the simulator is a great way to master this technique without any actual risks. Flight simulators are the perfect environment to practice these scenarios. Use them to build your confidence in identifying and resolving potential issues. You can set failures and other problems with your aircraft if you want a little bit of complexity. And that's a wrap on the Garmin G1000 engineering monitoring features. Now the real aircraft or a modified G1000 might have a little bit more, but for the simulator and what we do on a daily basis in the simulator, this will work just fine. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced sim pilot, mastering these tools will elevate your flight experience. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below with your questions or tips. Don't forget you can also watch the other tutorials in this series. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time, up in the sky.